Here's a tutorial for my robotics students to make a nameplate or decal with our MakerBot 3D printer. The nameplate will hang from their laboratory toolboxes. The dimensions of the piece should be in the neighborhood of 70 millimeters by 35 millimeters. My seahorse piece you see here is about 62 by 36. Because these will be printed in low resolution, the thickness of the piece should be a multiple of 0.3 millimeters. The thickness of my ornament is 2.1 millimeters. This will give me seven layers of plastic, which is perfect. The nameplate will be secured to the toolbox with a 440 machine screw, so a 3.6 millimeter diameter mounting hole should be added to the piece. The mounting hole needs some heft to it, and I find a 1.5 millimeter offset is plenty for this purpose. To start, you'll need to find an image to trace around. Go to Google Images and search for Silhouette. Choose an image to your liking. I've chosen this seahorse as you see here. To save the image, right click on it and choose Save As. Note the file location and the file type. PNG, GIF, JPEG, whatever. Now, start SketchUp and choose the appropriate template. Because I will be 3D printing this piece, I selected the Woodworking Millimeters template. Next, select the tape measure tool to put marks along the axes at 70 millimeters and 35 millimeters. These will simply serve as reference guidelines. Now choose a top down view and click the Zoom Extents button to zoom into the region. Next, add the image to your sketch. Go to File, Import, and choose your image. Be sure to search for the proper file type. Click on the origin and drag the image to roughly the dimensions of the tape measure marks. Now you know your piece will be the right size. Because my seahorse is so curvy, I will use the Arc tool to outline most of the edges of my figure. I will also use the Freehand tool and the Line tool. I'll start with the Freehand tool and trace around the silhouette. Because the line color is black, it is difficult to see, so I'll change it to a brighter color. Click on Windows, Style, Edit, and select your color and brightness. Then close the dialog box. I will chase around the image using small segments, always starting on the endpoint of the previously drawn segment. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Here I jump between using the arc, the line, and the freehand tools until the entire outline is complete. I'll speed up the video for you now. So I'm just about finished, and when I connect the last segment with the first segment, the outline should fill in with a light gray color. Oops, uh, I must have missed a connection somewhere, because the seahorse is still black. There must be a break in one of my lines. So what I'm going to do is use the line tool to bisect my image. You can see the bottom filled in nicely, so the mistake must be in the top half. I continue to bisect the drawing until I hone in on the mistake. Oh, there it is. It's in the snout. I don't need the green edges anymore, so I'll revert to black now. Once again, get there from Window, Styles, Edit. Now that the entire image is gray, I should erase the bisecting lines to make one solid surface.
I can make the creature a little cuter by adding an eyeball with the circle tool. And now that I am finished with the silhouette image, I can delete it or move it out of the way. I'll just move it over here. So now the hard work is done. I now have a completed piece that I can push pull to some thickness. However, I would not recommend doing that at this point, so I'm going to undo that. To hang the decal from a 440 screw, a 1.8 millimeter radius hole should be added to the piece. One way to do that is to simply put a circle in the head of the seahorse. A hole in its head looks a bit odd and seems a little cruel, but perhaps this will work for your object. It is important to place the circle along the center of mass so it hangs properly. I'm just eyeballing it here, and I am placing the mounting hole near the axis of symmetry. If this look suits you, all you need to do is push-pull it up to a height of 2.1 millimeters or so and you are ready to print. Personally, I think it looks weird to have a hole in the head of this cute little guy, so I'll add a mounting hole to the top of its head. First I'll undo the last few steps. To make the mounting hole, draw a 1.8 millimeter radius circle over here, away from the seahorse. Then use the handy offset tool to make a concentric circle that is 1.5 millimeters larger. I can then delete the inner circle to make the 440 hole. And now I can move it to the top of the seahorse's head. Do this by either double clicking on the hole or drag selecting the hole with the arrow tool and then moving it with the move tool. It's always an adventure for a beginner to use the move tool, so you may need to undo and try again a few times. It helps to view it from a top-down view. Next, grab an edge of the circle with the move tool and drag it to your piece. Do not simply place it on the tip of the image, for it will snap off very easily. Make sure you undo any mistakes. Rather, I want the big circle to overlap significantly with my nameplate to give it enough real estate to make a solid connection. So now I can grab my erase tool and get rid of these unwanted lines. You want to erase these lines to make the next step much easier. This seahorse is much cuter than the one with the hole in its head, I think. Now you are ready to push pull it up 2.1 millimeters. Always orbit to a side view when you push pull to give you a better perspective. Just lift it up and you are ready to print it out. Sometimes my students get a little ahead of themselves and they first make a 3D object and then try to add a 3D mounting hole to that object. This can be tricky, but here are a few tips for success. First, let me undo a few steps and make my seahorse a solid 3D object with a height of 2.1 millimeters. I can also lift the mounting hole up to the same height. Now to move this, you will need to first either triple click on the mounting hole or drag select it with the arrow tool. Then grab a point on the top edge of the mounting hole and move it to a meaty part of your object. This seems easy and you may wonder why I make such a big deal about it. Well, intersecting 3D pieces is much more difficult than intersecting 2D objects, as you will see. So if you zoom in here, you can see that the intersection of these two planes is not really an intersection because there is no edge at that interface. There are many ways to intersect these faces, but perhaps the easiest way here is to simply draw a new edge with the line tool like so.
I must orbit around and do the same for the other side. Here it is difficult to see into the nooks and crannies, so I'll use the section plane to hide part of the geometry, allowing me a better view. I can click on the section plane and move it in and out to make more room to work. Now I can draw that final edge with the line tool. To get rid of the section plane, simply click on it and press the delete key on your keyboard. Now I can come in here with the eraser and erase the overlap lines on the bottom and the top. Before putting this project to bed, I recommend using the section plane to click on the top face and verify that every bit of the inside is watertight. Now, finally, I am ready to 3D print my seahorse decal.